Welcome to the Tree of Life Church this morning. We're glad you came out to worship with us. Would you guys stand up and let's give God some praises this morning. Father, we yes, are thankful Lord. to be in your house. Yes, God. We are thankful to be called by your name. And help us this morning, Lord, to just give you all the praise and the glory and the honor that you deserve. Mm -hmm. In spite of all of my mistakes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, let's, start, let's get a clap going. You guys help us clap a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's a good start. Let's do this one, too. A clap in time. <laughs> there you go. That'll help me stay straight.
hand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He! Together we'll sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord. Praise the Lord. You guys sound good out there. <laughs> Come, Holy Spirit. Fill this place, Lord. Fill this place. You are welcome here, Lord. You're needed here, Lord. Cause we believe there is no doubt Cause we have seen your faithfulness My fortress over and over Sing that verse again I believe there is no doubt cause I have seen
This, this is so, um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy. I see, I see crazy stuff sometimes. So uh, take me through the water. Just go, go, go to that, uh, that screen. Say, take me through the water. Let me ask you something. This is what God is famous for, yes. okay? He takes your life, and he causes his life to come into you. That's what water baptism is all about. He says, it's, you know, we, we identify with his death, his burial, and his resurrection. So he's taken us through the fire. He's taken us through the water. So he's taken us through the water. What's the next one? He takes us through the fire. God wants us to be filled with the Spirit. He wants us to be filled with the Spirit. So he wants us to have the water. He wants us to have the fire. Matter of fact, he said, John baptized you with water, but one who comes after will baptize you with fire. 
right? And then what it goes on, what does it say next? It says, what does it say next? Help me, help me, help me. It says, do, do what you're famous for. If God can take you out of death and bring you into life, if he can cause your spirit to come alive in the spirit of God, what more do you want? Today, if there's any issue in your life, he's famous to change it. Amen. He's famous to change. Look what it says next. I mean, look what it says next. It says, talk, talk about shutting the mouths of lion. Who's the lion? Who's like a roaring lion? Who's trying to say things to you that are not even true? Telling you that you're not good enough, that you haven't made it, you're a failure, you're, you're being rejected, whatever. He shuts the mouth of lion. He shuts it. And then he brings dry bones back to life. He can take that which seems to be not alive, not able to do anything. He makes an army. Look around you. We are an army. This is what the scripture is all about. It's from Ezekiel. He says, Lord, you know. I mean, that's what the prophet, you know, can, can I turn these bones? Can I, what can I do? You know, Lord. And he turns them into a great army. Can I tell you, God knows the reason we're here today is because he wants to make us a great army. Yeah. A great army. What does it say next? Come on, that's what you are famous for. That's what you are famous for. Lord, we just believe in miracles right now. Right now, Lord Jesus, in our lives, we just believe, Lord, that you're going to take us through the water, through the fire. You desire, Lord, to do great things. You're going to shut the lion up. You're going to, Lord, release your power. You're going to make us a great army. We are not shrinking back. We're standing, and you are the Lord of hosts. And we declare you to be our king, our soon coming king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what you are famous for. Spirit, come and fall on us. you too. <laughs>
Pour out your love, Lord, in this place. Pour out your love, Lord, into our hearts that we would go out, God, and love others the way you've loved us.
could ever see. Listen, there, there is something that God wants to change in our hearts and in our lives because one of our problems is that we come to church, but we need to be the church. And the reason you're here today is so God can fill you with his love so you can go out to those that you need to touch. This world's a mess. People are hurting. And if you don't, you know, this is the, so often what we, we, we Christians, I am not, I'm saying we, I'm including myself. We sometimes can be so self-centered. We want the love of God, but we don't realize the love of God is for us to give away for us to give away. And I want us to sing this part again. It says, because the love of God wants to come into us so we can touch those around us. You know, one of the things that God spoke to me, and I need to be reminded of this, okay? I just need to be reminded. When we first came to Tree of Life, when we first started this church, God says, restore this community around you. You know, the thing is that every day, every day we give food away at this place. I don't care what day it is. There's always abundance of things we try to give away but we don't want to just give food away we want to give the bread of life away we want to restore this community and i'm telling you it is so easy it is so easy to walk by do you know how easy it is to walk by somebody oh the priest did it the levi did it just walk by those that are hurting help us lord to let your love flow into us and let your love flow out of us. And the more that you give, the more will flow through your life. Let this song really, this, not, you know, often we don't realize, we're not just singing. We are praying, declaring, speaking words into our spirit and into our lives. Let's, 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 let's do it.
There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. All around me. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be sing it out now. but you never tremble under us, Lord. When our heart is overwhelmed, lead us to the rock that is higher than we are, Lord. And that is you, just the voices. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you for your faithfulness, Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, come and Provide. fall upon us, Lord, with your fire. Yes, God. Lord, with the boldness we need in these days Thank to you, proclaim Lord. Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So every heart, Lord, could turn to you and be saved. Mm -hmm. Praise you, Jesus, for the work you are doing. Amen. Mm. Please be seated. morning, everybody. It's good to be together this morning in the house of the Lord. I wonder if we could just express how happy we are to be here and just clap and praise. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Amen. 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 We are blessed. If you are a guest here uh, this morning, please, uh, there's, like, there's a little folder you can fill out, fill in your information, because we are so glad that you're here. Like Pastor Andrew said, we, we don't want to just pass by those in need, and all of us are in need this morning, amen? Yeah. 
We need more of him, more of his Holy Spirit. So we would like to connect with you. Also, we have a few things coming up. The Youth Game Night. That's April 2nd, 6 p.m. So please come to that. If you've got kids or grandkids that might be blessed by that, please uh, let them know, and we would uh, appreciate having them. Also, we have the Woman's Life Relaunch. Anybody blessed by the Life Relaunch out there? Anybody gone through it? Amen. It's great. April 8th and 9th, St. John's Episcopal Church. And you can sign up online by going to womensliferelaunch.org. Men too. We got another one coming up. That's right. Yeah, we had one yesterday in LaBelle, right? Oh, oh, Covenant Church. Amen. That's great. Uh, a few things came to my mind this week and wanted to just share it with you. Uh, the scripture came to mind in Proverbs, where it says, guard your heart, for out of it come the issues of life. Amen. Everybody's heard that scripture. And so the Lord does speak to us as we walk with him. And so he reminded me how important it is to guard our heart. Our heart is our most valuable possession. And so I have an iPhone, and on that iPhone, I'm able to pay with things with just my fingerprint. And so I went and tried to purchase something, and I could not purchase it. Of course, I left my wallet at home, so all I had was my iPhone. Anybody know what Apple Pay is? So, you know, I put my fingerprint on the little part of the phone that reads it, and it didn't read. And I ended up having to go home empty-handed. And then I looked down at my fingerprint, and I saw all these little, small, little cuts. See, I was working with insulation. I was working on some air conditioning duct work. And that insulation had caused all these little micro cuts in my fingerprint. And so what I was trying to purchase, I was not, try I was not able to purchase because... There was some things that, that I did that kind of marred my identity. And so the Lord spoke to me and said, guard your heart. It is your most valuable possession. Now, eventually those cuts healed up and I got my identity back. Amen. <laughs> and so, so we know that, that Christ Jesus has given us a brand new identity and we need to guard that with everything we have. And this is why we gather like we gather. We gather to get reminded of our new identity. We gather so that, so that that identity can get healed, just like my fingerprint was healed. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to talk about the offering. Okay, so uh, when Jesus was with his disciples, he did three things. He took the bread... And it says, he blessed, he break, and he gave. He blessed, he break, and he gave. And so when we truly know that we are blessed, we don't have any problem giving. Amen? And when he takes us through some breakings in our life, and all of a sudden the things that used to matter to me no longer matter because he's, he's broken me, he's crushed me because he wants to do something different in my life, then I have no problem giving, just like Jesus. He was the best example of all time because he gave his life for us. And so we are a church that takes what God has given us and gives to the community. We're not trying to build a bigger building. We're not trying to be anything except the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. And I think that's something very special right here in this church family. So let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for giving your life to us. Father, you showed us how to give and you gave your only begotten son for us that we could have a new life and a new identity and even a new heart that is sensitive to you so, Father, just 
put on our heart right now what we should give and multiply that gift to this community. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, doesn't he look wiser today? He, he, uh, he looks wiser, doesn't he? He had a birthday this week, so... And so it's just like he looks a little wiser. Um, and I know that, that I'm going to take a moment here just while they're taking up the offering. But those that have gone through Life Relaunch, both men and women, if you would stand, please, if, you, if you've gone through Life Relaunch. And I know that some of you went through Life Relaunch this weekend. Who went through it this weekend? Who? Let me see the hands. I think there's a couple of them. Okay, I'm going to thank you so much. I'm going to tell you that you can be seated. I'm telling you that Life Relaunch is a very, very important part of Tree of Life and the community and our nation. And we really believe that every believer uh, needs to go through. There's a lot of healing, a lot of breakthrough that will take place. Shirley, can you stand up and just because you went through it. And I'm telling you, there's more women uh, Life Relaunches. There's men Life Relaunches. And I, I, I say this, I can tell you to do it, but you've got to act on it. I can encourage you that this is a very important part of your life. It'll change you. Does it change you, Anita? Did it help you? You went through it, right? It It really helped me. Um, For me, I had been through something similar a couple times. But this, I'm sure it was the timing of the Lord, but also... There was just so much value, and I felt safe because I didn't know any of those women, and they didn't know me, and God just really used them to speak to me, and it also helped me be really vulnerable. So, yeah, it was awesome. And so we we want to encourage you to go through that. Shirley, what happened to you? And yesterday was, I actually, I went in not knowing what to expect, because I was full of junk. And uh, yesterday I feel like um, I got emptied and refilled again. And I'd like to share my um, commitment, personal commitment with you. I can see it. Um, I commit to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Thank you, Jay. Jay just mentioned that. <laughs> um, for, for um, I just need to go in the light, please, yeah, Pastor, if you don't mind. Yeah, thank you. It's good to be in the light. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I just took my lamp from under the bed and put it on the lampstand. Can you stand, stand back here, right yeah, here. Back I want to see. Yes, because right I have there, on my dark right glasses. There. Now you can see really good. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being patient with me. I, commit, I committed to be the hands and feet of Jesus, um, to go where... Ever, God will send me to be that light in the darkness, to minister in spirit and truth. God has risen me up from the ashes, cleaned me up for, from the muck and the mire, that he had protected me while I waited on him, not understanding. He's, I have connected the dots backwards, backwards. And now, you know, I know my purpose for, for the life for my, he has changed my life, and the life I had planned, God, oh, he has changed everything for me. And I had to let go of the life that I planned, that I created for myself. I am a new vessel, emptied, ready to be filled again. God, you said, beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. Send me, Lord, send me. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for I am a willing vessel, humbled and obedient. I took off the mask that I was wearing there, Lord, and put on the new mask, a new a new one for Jesus. I thank you, God, that you have restored me. And I Oh, Lord, thank you for this journey that I didn't understand. But I've been wounded. I'm no longer wounded, but I'm a sister warrior in Christ. I'm ready to take on the work of Jesus. Oh, Father God, and I ask you to to, to stand. I stand before you, God, and I honor and I raise my hands, and I thank you for the authentic love that you've given me. And in closing, I want to say one thing that the sister shared with me. We know what a counterfeit dollar looks like. But we have to learn, instead of learning what a counterfeit dollar looked like, we have to learn what the real money looked like. So when the counterfeit comes, we will know the difference. Amen. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. 
So I truly believe that this is a great opportunity, and uh, I believe that there's things coming that we need to be prepared for, and I thank the Lord for these warriors that are coming forth, um, and this is just like an intense little training time. So um, I have a word from the Lord that I've been praying about for the last couple of weeks, I didn't preach last week because of our special guest that we had, so this has been stirring in me for a couple of weeks. And then I talked to Paul, sitting right over here, Paul Long. He's a, a pastor from California and has retired, but he's also a missionary. He goes all over. And I talked to him because he was out of town last week, and I said, how did everything go? He said, oh, it went great. I preached on Elijah. <laughs> That's what I'm preaching on today, Elijah. And then we start talking about everything, but I believe that there's a word of the Lord about Elijah. Do you know that three times in scripture it talks about the spirit of Elijah or Elijah? It talks about it, the, the original Elijah that showed up and the miracles he did. Then we know that John the Baptist was a symbol of the Elijah spirit. And also in the last day, there's also going to be another Elijah that's going to show up. So I think God does things in threes. And I think we need to be prepared for the third Elijah coming soon. So uh, would you stand with me? And I, I, I'm simply um, entitling this, this message today and next week, I'm just entitling it, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. I think sometimes what we do without even realizing it is we look at certain people as, oh, they're special. Oh, they, they, they got something. I don't have that. I don't have that. No, Elijah was a man just like us. He was human just like us. He had a nature like us. He had problems like us. He was in an environment that was not easy to live in, just like us. He had issues, just like us. He had stupid leaders, just like us. I'm serious. We're going to talk about, no, I'm talking about, not, not, I'm not just talking about one. I'm talking about in general, all these different things that are happening. Well, he lived in a country that was not honoring God, just like us. Okay, so we are going to dig into this a little bit more, and the theme scripture is just simply from uh, James chapter 5, verse 17, and, and it's so simple. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. Wow, that's, you know, it's important for us to see this, and he prayed again. I want you to know something. He prayed, and it stopped raining, and then he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. I want to say something to you right now. I believe we're going to enter a time of difficulty, but it's not going to hurt us because we are praying to the one who can stop the rain and who can bring the rain. So, Father, I just ask that you would just challenge our hearts, our lives today, Teach us your word in a deeper way. Lord, uh, this is so important for us to realize what's really happening in our society, what's really happening in our own lives, and where our faith needs to be and our trust needs to be, because we're human. We have a nature that needs to be touched by the supernatural. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Why don't you turn to someone, I'm just a human like you. I'm a human just like you. All right. So, I mean, sometimes I feel like that you guys get to sit down and I got to stand up. I don't know how that works all the time, but just, just for this little part, I'm going to sit down just for a second. And I want to tell you something about us as humans. We have issues. We have issues. Oh, yeah. We have, we have issues, and, and this is the thing that God knows about us. He knows that about us. And so there is, there's, there's so many things that I can say. We have, we have, all of us have hope, not just here, but all over the world. There's people who have hope. That all they want is a successful family, good kids, you know, make a little bit of money. I mean, and then there's some that are a little bit more greedy and all, but there's, in general, people just want blessings in their lives. And that's one of the things that we have hopes and we have dreams, we have desires and so forth. But we also have weak weaknesses. We have strengths. 
We have shortcomings. We have all these things in our lives. But the one thing that sets us apart, if you look at Scripture, when you look at every character in the Bible, you see that they were humans. They, were, they had a nature. Uh, they, they made mistakes. But they also had something which Elijah had, which I believe is not just special towards him, but it's also for us. He had faith in God. He had faith. I'm going to stand up on that one. He had faith in God. Faith in God is what changed all of these people's lives. It's what will change our lives, having faith in God. I, I call Elijah a reluctant prophet. And I, I'm, I'm going to say this, an, a reluctant prophet in the sense he didn't want to share this word. Let me, let, me, let me tell you something about Jesus. Jesus, when he was in the garden, he prayed and he says, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But not my will, but your will be done. So often in our lives, we, we think, oh, yeah, I've got to have this really strong desire to do certain things. Sometimes we're a little reluctant. And if we're not careful, we'll trust our human nature instead of trusting the supernatural, trusting the spirit of God in us, trusting the word of God and allowing the word of God get the reluctancy out of us and allowing the spirit of truth to speak through us. And some, sometimes I, I don't want to share certain things. You ever you notice when I sometimes preach, I don't know if I should say that. That's right. And then I go ahead and say it anyway. Because I got to, because the Spirit of God tells me to. And so it's important for us to see this. And so, but also he was a man of deep. I mean, gosh, you know how, you know how often we are so shallow? Oh, I'm having a tough time. Dig a little deeper. Because God's there. God wants to touch you. God wants to use you. He wants to influence us in a very powerful way. So I want to just talk about history a little bit, about history. Because we're going to get into this story a little bit, and I want us to understand history. History repeats itself over and over and over again. The Bible repeats itself over and over again. And I, and I want you to notice some of the comparisons. And I'm not just talking about the Bible history. I'm talking about history in general. And you could just literally say, his story. You know, America has a history. Israel has a history. And I've, some of them are very similar, very similar and it's, it's interesting how God uses those things and how certain nations have a history of conflict. And I think we're seeing some of that. And someone's like, are we going to have another world war? I mean, that's already happened, hasn't it? History is trying to repeat itself. There's conflict. So one of the things that I want to show you here is, and I'm going to just go to this, is, is, is I want you to notice the, the importance of this Brethren, if anyone among you, this is, this is right after this, this idea comes about Elijah and that he prays and it does not rain, and then it does rain. But then it says after this, brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he turns a sinner from the error of his way, will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So one of the reasons that God sends prophets is not to condemn, but for them to turn. Amen. Jonah. Oh, did, did you preach about Jonah, David? Da Jonah was a reluctant prophet who didn't really want to go to Nineveh. He didn't want to go. And then he went, and he gave the word, and they repented, and Jonah was upset that they repented. I mean, what do we want in America? Do we want America to fall or do we want America to repent? repent. What about us? Repent. What about us? Our, our lives? There was someone who came up to me at, after, the second, after the first service and said, I've, I've wavered, I've erred, and I've walked away from God, and I'm just coming back. Yay. Come on, that's the best thing. God's not wanting to hurt us. He doesn't want to hurt us. He wants to help us. So if you read James chapter 5, it's interesting how it starts out about caring for people and, and not being greedy and not being selfish. And then it goes into the portion of, of praying and so forth. And then it goes into this section here. But at the very end of this, it says, you know, if there's any of you that are, that are sick, if there's any of you that need prayer, God wants to heal. He wants to help. And if anyone has sinned, their sins are, are forgiven. But it also says, 
we need to turn people. If someone's not doing the right things, we need to have the boldness. There's sometimes a reluctancy in us to say, what you're doing is not healthy. The direction you're taking is not good. Okay? So here we go into this story a little bit. And this is an interesting story, and I want to go back into this history thing again. The wonderful thing about Israel, or we call the, the Jewish nation, is that it, God is the one that established it. And God spoke through prophets. And there was a prophet named Samuel. And uh, Samuel, you know, he uh, he's a powerful prophet. And then the, the people decided, oh, we, we, we prefer to have presidents or kings. We prefer to have leaders. And so what did it say? It says they rejected God because they wanted man to lead them instead of God to lead them. And so one of the things that you notice there is that Saul was the first king, then after Saul came David, and after David came Solomon, and after Solomon came his two sons who actually divided the kingdom, and the kingdom was divided between the northern kingdom and the southern That's never happened in America, has it? We don't have, we don't have, we, did, did we ever have a southern and a northern kingdom? And we had a war actually going on. Do you guys remember that? There was a president named Abraham, Abraham Lincoln who was involved in that. You know? And then if you go through history and you see some of the same comparison. We've had great presidents, weak presidents. We've had presidents that were in conflict and so forth. We've had all of that. But it's the same thing with the children of Israel. They had the same thing. So this is what we call the kings. First kings and second kings are all about the different kings or the different presidents that Israel had. Okay? The Chronicles, the first and second Chronicles, is more in detail of some of the things that happened. So if you want to read a little bit more about this, and it's very interesting how often in Kings, first and second, and in Chronicles, it said these kings did what was evil in the sight of God. They didn't do what was right. They did selfish things. They did things that dishonored God. Okay, so what we have here is a story about Elijah who was a reluctant prophet, but he had a word from the Lord. It wasn't just, and he prayed and he says, do you really want me to give this word? He says, yes, I want you to give this word. And he gave this word. And Elijah, inhabitant of Gilead, said to Ahab, now Ahab is an interesting, he was a king of the northern kingdom, and he had a wife named uh, Jezebel. Jezebel. Anybody ever heard of Jezebel? Jezebel. Jezebel was a very controlling, manipulative woman. And it's not so much just, I want to say, Jezebel's spirit can be on a man and on a woman. So it's a controlling spirit, but it's a very dishonoring spirit towards God. And what she brought into the kingdom was false prophets and pro- false leadership and, and idols. And they began to sacrifice children. But that's never happened in America. <laughs> We've had certain leaders who allowed abortions to begin to take place. And we're offering idol. You know what? An I, uh, selfishness is an idol. You know what? Having a child is a very serious responsibility, and some people don't want it. And they'll offer their child up as a sacrifice to honor their selfish desires. Okay? So you had this spirit of Ahab and Jezebel, and it is something God wanted to bless I'm telling you, God wants to bless America. God wants to bless people. He's not out to curse. He's out to bless. God is for us, not against us. He's not. And so here it is. It says, as the Lord of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain these, three, these, th- these years except by my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying. So this is what he said. He said this. Elijah spoke this word. He said, get away from here. So Elijah, after he gave the word to Ahab, he got away to a a place. It's called eastward by the brook of Kareth, which flows into the Jordan. So we kind of know that it's in Israel and there's this little brook that was flowing out of there. And it says here, and it will be that you shall drink from this brook. And I have commanded these ravens to feed you there. So that's kind of an interesting thing. We'll dig into that just in a little bit. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, and he went and stayed by the brook which flowed into the Jordan. So I want you to see this picture. After he gives this word, 
he just kind of goes and hangs out in this location. And something unique happens. And I want you to notice it says there. I want you to notice it says there. And I think we're in a very interesting place right now. We're in a there place where I think our country and our world is in an interesting place. Whether we are going to honor God or not. And then there's certain people who are going to find a place in God. And that's what Elijah did. I want to kind of use Psalm 23 as an example. Now, what did he prophesy? He said, it's not going to rain. So this brook, this water flowing from this brook. So Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So what it's saying, it's saying that even though that there's famine coming or pestilence coming or conflict coming, the Lord's going to be our provider. He will lead us beside the still waters. What is, come on. Restore our soul and lead us in path of righteousness for his namesake. So one of the things that we can, I can tell you probably when he first got to this little, uh, little brook or, or this little place, it, it actually was just flowing pretty, pretty quickly. But it got smoother and calmer and stiller because it began to dry up. And, then, and this is the thing that he said he stayed there, which flowed into the Jordan River which was the supply line. If you go to Israel, it's the supply line for all the, the land and for, 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 the, for the fish and for, for fertilization, all of the things that were there. So it says, and the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook and it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. So it got calmer. I want to. I want to just make sure you understand this. It got calmer and calmer. When the world is going crazy, one of the things about our relationship with God it should be is things should be calmer and calmer because we're not relying on this world system. The Lord is our shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. God is our provider. How crazy is it right now to go to the gas station? How crazy is it right now to go to the grocery store? And you hear on the news all these things. It's, it's kind of weird. But the wonderful thing here is that ravens. I mean, come on. Ravens. Have you ever studied anything about ravens? Ravens are not clean animals. And they're very, they're very greedy animals. They actually steal. I don't know if you, they, they actually like silver. They, like, they, they come and pick. They take things. They're, they're not givers. Ravens are... Have you ever been to the beach here and, and had like a little picnic and all of a sudden these birds come and just kind of, actually we were at the beach and we had our stuff in, in, in our little container there and the bird just came and started picking things out. We were walking and we got back and our chips were all over the place. The, the, the birds got a hold of our chips and started eating them. They're not here to to, to give us anything, they're here to take something from us. What God is showing you is I will use something that is unnatural to make sure that you're going to be taken care of. Amen. I'll take something that's not clean and make sure that it will provide something for you. I'll feed you in the morning. I'll feed you in the evening. This is actually a spiritual principle that in the midst of all the stuff that's going on, God says, I'm going to provide for you. Even when you declare a famine or you begin to see stuff not working out the way that you know it should, shouldn't, God says, I'll provide for you. And this is what it says. The brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. But I want you to be careful, be careful not to move too quickly. Just because things are drying up doesn't mean you need to leave yet. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon. Now, I want to connect this thing because I want you to see this connection between Chronicles and the kings and the connection here. And so, then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, this is God speaking. Why would he do that? Why would he say that? I want you to, to see what it says. This is the most famous scripture that we always quote. 
If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal, hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Do you know, one thing we know about Elijah, right? Elijah brought, what did he, what happened when he prayed? What happened from the heavens? What happened? Fire, Fire from heaven. Do you know in this portion of scripture, in 2 Chronicles 7, in the very beginning of the chapter, if you go to it, I want you to read it maybe tonight or tomorrow this week. Fire fell from heaven and consumed the sacrifice, and the priests could not minister. Okay? So there is a, there's a similarity between God wanting to show his favor and God also declaring that my favor is going to bring about the things that need to happen. And if you don't honor me, if you err from your ways... You need to hear the truth. And that's one thing about Elijah that was so wonderful. Is he spoke the truth. He said, it's not going to rain until you repent. And Ahab and Jezebel had a very rebellious spirit. They didn't want to repent. And the reason that the country suffered was not because of the people so much, but because of the leadership. Ahab and Jezebel caused a famine to come. I wonder if that's happening. In our society today. Not just here. It happened in Venezuela. It happened in Russia. It happened in all these countries. I can tell you when we were kids, when we were kids, and we would go into these countries in Romania, Bulgaria. I mean, we had uh, Dimitri here last week, but when we went into those countries, you, I waited in line for bread. I would go into the grocery store and I would see nothing. It would be amazing to us. We... We were some of the only cars on the road. There was not gas. Oh, that's not something that we're struggling with now. <laughs> when you dishonor God, there is conflict that comes with it. And I'm going to say it this way. With the children of Israel, it didn't all happen at once. God blessed them. Even with evil kings, he blessed them. But America is so used to prosperity, so used to the favor of God, because this country has done a lot for the kingdom of God. We've spread the gospel. We've helped a lot of people. We're not, there's a lot wrong, but there's also a lot right. So the idea here is that Ahab was, was told this, but it says, look, then he says, if my people, if my people would humble themselves, you know what is the worst thing is when you have a leader who says they honor God and they don't do it. Their mouth says something, but their actions say something completely different. So we need to be aware of the struggle that exists here. So it goes on back to, to, to 1 Kings, and it says, and the word of the Lord came. And when the word of the Lord comes, I think it's important for us to listen. When the word of the Lord came saying, arise, go to Seraphith, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, again, it's a, a place where he says, I want you to go there. Now, Sidon was not in Israel. It was not, uh, uh, and it was a, a guess, guess, guess who's from Sidon? Jezebel. That's her hometown, her home country. And she brought that spirit from Sidon to Israel, but Elijah was sent to go there. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll see that in a moment. So see, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Seraphath. And when he had come to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks and called her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. What's the first thing that he asked for? The brook dried up. He'd been walking. He got to the city, where this, to the gate of the city. And what were they lacking? Water was very, very precious. First thing that the prophet asked, he says, can you give me some water? What is, what is this, doesn't the Bible say something about when you give a prophet some water, there's a, there's a reward? It's not about the prophet, it's about the word of the Lord. So the idea is, is that this woman, this was, she could have said, there's not enough water. No, she said, let me, let me take care of this. So 
he asked for a drink of water. And as she was going to get it, so she was not reluctant, she was going to go get it, right? On the way of obeying that first word that the prophet gave her, says, can you give me some water, please? It says, he called her to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. <gasps> he, water and bread? I mean, not, now he's getting greedy, right? And this is what it says. And so she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a pen and a little oil in the jar. See, I have gathered a couple of sticks that I may go and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. This widow was desperate. This widow didn't have much. She just had enough for today. Just, this was her last meal. This was her last meal. But even in that moment, she was willing to go get this prophet some water. And then on the way, he says, why don't you do this for me? Why don't you bring me this? You know. So, so he said, you know, can you please do this? It's interesting. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Do you know the, I mean, I've been in, in, in America now. I've lived here for a long time. I was born and raised in Germany. I lived there for my childhood and my teenage years. I came to America. But I have never, ever seen fear like the last three years. You know, I always thought that America was the home of the brave and the free. And we have been so afraid. And I have seen it in the stores. I've seen it in life. I've seen it with people, interaction with people. It's like I visited someone and, and I walked in the door, walked into their house. Literally, I walked in their house visiting them. And, they, and I reached out to shake the man's hand. And the woman, no, no, no don't touch him. Don't touch him. I'm the only one that can take care of him. If you've got COVID or anything, I'm the only one. And she, I just backed off. Went outside and talked to her through a screen door. Because she didn't want me. She was, and this, I considered her a woman of faith. Fear describes people. God has not given us a spirit of fear. And when you, fear is a bad motivator. And it's a bad manipulator. And it's a bad policymaker. Did I say that in proper order? It's a bad policymaker. We do not make decisions based on fear. Matter of fact, even presidents that we've had says, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. We need to remove it from our lives. Oh, I mean, we had other leaders who said, never, never give up. You know why they said that? Because there was a lot of junk going on. A lot of things that were evil. But fear should not be our motivator. What was Elijah's motivator? Faith. What's ours? Faith. So it says here, do not fear. Go, do as you have said, but make some small cake for it first. Don't you like that? Oh, that's not right. Feed the prophet first. This is the first principle that you find in Scripture all over the time. All the time. It's not based upon the prophet itself. It's about honoring God. He says, give first a little bit to the, to, the, to the prophet, to the word of the Lord, actually. Isn't that what we would call a prophet is the one who gives the word of the Lord? But make me a small cake first, bring it to me, and afterwards make some for yourself and your son. So it's not like he was saying, you can't have any. Matter of fact, he says, if you will do this first, and then after that take care of your family, look what it says next. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil dry, uh, run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. Do you know what he's saying to us? You know what the prophet is saying and what the word of the Lord is? It's history repeating itself. He says, I'm going to provide for you. I will not cause you to have lack. I will give you enough for today. And tomorrow there will be enough. And the next day there will be enough. And the day after that there will be enough. I will take care of you during a famine. I am not a gloom and, glo uh, gloom and doom preacher. That's not, I don't believe that that's what God wants. 
But I am saying we're going to go through some difficult times, but God is going to provide for us. It's interesting, three and a half years. Hmm, I wonder how long that is. I'm just telling you, God repeats history. God repeats history on purpose to teach us lessons. But it says here, the bin of flour shall not be used up. Now, this, this to me is one of those kind of like give and take, give and take kind of principles. And Paul and I talked about this. It's interesting that the prophet relies on the obedience of the widow, and the widow uh, uh, has to trust the word of the Lord in Elijah. Because what, what, what would happen if, if the woman would have said, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm just fixing me a meal for my son and I, and that's it. Right? And the prophet would have, they both would have struggled. This is the thing the enemy would like to do to our country. He'd like to divide us. He would like to say, no, no, no. This group over here, we'll take care of ourselves. And this group over here, you'll take care of yourself. We are dependent on one another. More than we realize. I did a wedding yesterday, and we talked about the ring, about the ring. There's no giver or receiver. It's just kind of like it just kind of gives and receives and receives and gives. There's, there's no beginning or end of it. And when you really are in love and you really care for someone, it's not about giving, oh, I just got to give. No. In the same time that you give, you receive. And the same time that you receive, you give. It's just a natural thing that begins to happen in a relationship. And the enemy would like to stop that. He would like to stop that. Can I say to you, I don't depend upon you and you shouldn't depend upon me, but we depend upon the word of the Lord. And when the Lord says for us to do something, see, when he says, give first, give your first fruits, give, God, God knows that the gas bills are going to get a little higher. He knows that the groceries are going to cost a little bit more. But when we first came to this community, one of the things that God says, I want you to bless this community I want you to restore this community. Do you know how much bread came in today? I mean, I don't know. If I, brought, I brought two con big containers. Then after I brought some, there's another person that came. There was so much bread out there that, that we, we, ha we had no room to put it. Every day, God provides. And he will continue. Uh, Tom and Diane, they're, they're part of the food pantry ministry. Can I tell you that Nita came to me a few months ago or two months ago, and she says, Andrew, we're not getting enough meat. We prayed, and what happened? More meat showed up than they ever thought. God will always provide. But the reason he provides is because we give, because we put God first. And the principle is there. But when we have mistakes in our lives, when we err, and we don't walk in the truth, God says, can you, can you correct your ways? And I don't know if our leaders want to hear that today. They will tell us we can fix it. You know how Ahab and Jezebel, they always promise, oh, we'll take care of things. Ahab and Jezebel couldn't fix anything because they were worshiping the wrong God. And it's, it's the same thing here. So I want to just share with you. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. I mean, we say many days. The, the drought lasted for three and a half years. It's just starting. It's, well, it's already be, it began a while back. But it's continuing. And it's going to last for a while. The supply and all of those things are going to be affected. And she and he and her household ate for many days, and the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according, according to what? The word of the Lord. Not according to Elijah, but according to the word of the Lord. The word of God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. The word of the Lord is going to sustain us. The word of the Lord is going to be our source for anything and everything we do. And this is the word of the Lord for us. This is the word of the Lord for this church. God is not going, we are not going to be caught up in fear or in doubt or question that God's going to provide in the midst of this. 
Because this is something that we need to understand in our hearts. So I want to I wanna kind of, uh, let me go back because I want to go back and I, I want to just talk about something that was said here. And I don't know if I really communicated it well enough, but I, I just, I, I'm very good at this thing. I've become pretty good at going back a little bit here. So it says, um, this is what it says here. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people. I want you to notice, these are all things that are happening to us right now. We've seen this. I mean, that wasn't just long ago that I was reading about a, this a swarm of locusts was going through Europe, just all over the place. But it says here, when I shut up the heavens, when I cause a drought to take place, when I send pestilence. I mean, COVID, is that, a, is that a considered a pestilence? The idea is that God does not do these things, but he allows them to cause us to see his goodness. And he says, when I shut up heaven, because of why? So it is important for us to see this principle. So not one of the things that God wants to do for us is do something supernatural in our hearts. And I want to go and end this with the spirit of Elijah. Do you know there's a spirit of Elijah? Do you know that spirit of Elijah is available to us? Yes. It's the spirit of God. And this is what it says. And this is what Jesus quoted. This is also, it's found in Isaiah. It's also found in this particular portion of scripture in Luke. And it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I want you to, to say that with me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Do you know how... I mean, let me, sorry, slow down, Andrew, slow down. Say it again. Do you know how reluctant we are to declare that over ourselves? A lot of us are very reluctant to believe the Spirit of God is upon us. I don't, it's not a different spirit on a woman or a man. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of God. And He's upon you. He's upon me. He wants to help me. What does he say here? What does he communicate to us? Because he has anointed me. There's a purpose. The anointing destroys the yoke. The anointing of God wants to do something in our midst. He said, preach the gospel to the poor. There's a, there is a spirit of poverty. And God says, when you declare the gospel, it will bring abundance. And I'm not talking about some crazy prosperity man. I'm talking about the abundance of God, the favor of God, the anointing of God will come upon you. There is there's what we call spiritually poor and also physically being poor. But this is what he wants to bring. I find it interesting when people surrender their lives to God all of a sudden. David, are you an exa- I mean, he couldn't he was walking, he didn't he couldn't he couldn't even afford a bike. And then a bicycle came, and then a car came, and then a house came, and then blessings came over and over again. I'm telling you, when you really surrender your life to the Lord, the favor of God begins to overtake you. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. This is what it's talking about. Preach the gospel. He sent me to heal the broken. Do you know how many people's hearts are broken right now? Do you know why they're broken? There's families that are broken. There's mothers and fathers that are separated and divorced and everything else. And the kids are suffering and struggling. I mean, surely that's that's exactly what happened to her. Her heart was broken because the way she was treated by her mother and all the other things. All of us have some of these stories. He wants to heal our broken hearts. To proclaim liberty. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Do you know how many people are captured Right now with drugs and alcohol. And just they're in slavery. God says I want to set at liberty. And recovery of sight to the blind. You can have a conversation with someone. And someone cannot see the truth. You tell them and they just can't see it. Because they're blind. Why is it that certain people see things a certain way and it's all I think I, I, I can I yes I'm going to say there are certain people who see things and it is total lies and deception and you're just kind of like oh my god I can't believe that they believe this stuff do they really believe this stuff and then you try to talk to them about God and they're totally blind 
Like there's a veil over their eyes. They don't see it. You know, that's what it, the amazing, amazing grace. It says, I once was blind, but now I see. W- let me ask you this question. Once you got saved, did you see things differently? Come on, let me see your hand. If once you got saved, did you see things differently? Because that's what God wants to do. It says, so set at liberty those who are oppressed. Do you know the spirit of fear is oppressing people? It says, weighing down. And God says to us in the scripture, says, I want you to be an overcomer. Oppression wants to push you down. And God says, get on top. You are an overcomer in Christ Jesus. That's what he declares. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I don't care if it's a year of drought. I don't care if it's a year of famine. I don't care if it's a year of pestilence. God is going to make this the best year of our lives. You know why? Because he is our provider. He's our sustainer. He's our deliverer. He's our healer. He's the one that anoints us to accomplish these things. So this is what it says. But I, I want you to see this in context because history repeats itself. Then he closed the book. I, I haven't closed mine yet. Um, uh, and gave it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all were in the synagogue were fixed on him. They were all looking at him. I don't know. I mean, that's what you're doing right now. And he began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Do you know scripture needs to be fulfilled? God wants to fulfill scripture. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God wants you to believe scripture. He wants, to, wants you to believe the word of the Lord. He wants you to take it in. He wants you to embrace it. And it says, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. But not all of them heard it. Not all of them believed it. So it says, so all bore witness to him and marvel at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. So often on Sunday mornings, you go, oh man, that was a great message. You got to live it out on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday. You got to walk this thing out. It's not just hearing the word, it's doing it. Don't be a hearer of the word only, but be a doer of the word. So it says, these words were so powerful. And it says, then they made this interesting statement. Isn't this Joseph's son? I've said this before. They didn't see it as the word of the Lord. They saw it, oh, that's Joseph's boy. That's Lambert's, that's, that's Lambert's son, yes. That's I'm Lambert's son. I'm standing here. The idea is, see, think about what we just read. Elijah was a man with a nature just like ours. You can look at me and you can see all kinds of faults. Elijah had him. Elijah was afraid. Do you know that he had some fear? He was running away. He, hit, he, went, he made a statement. He says, I'm the only one left. <laughs> and then God said to him, no, there's 7,000 others who have not bowed down. God will use me. God will use you. But sometimes we kind of get a little, a little flaky. Did I say that about myself? The idea is don't get caught up in trusting the man, trust the message. But this is the thing that I'm telling you is that Joseph, it wasn't Joseph's son. It was the son of God. And now this is where it gets really interesting. It says, he said to them, you will surely say this proverb to me, physicians, heal yourself. Our society cannot heal itself. We as a nation cannot heal ourselves. It is when we, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face, then I will, God says, I will heal, and I will forgive, and I will restore the land. You and I cannot do it, but God can. And when you surrender to God and you let God's word be fulfilled in you, you can be healed. You are healed. You are forgiven. You are restored. If you've gone astray uh, and, and erred in your ways, if you repent, God says, I'll take you back. The prodigal son, he went away and he came back and he says, look, my son, which was lost, now is found. God is interested in healing you. But if you think you can heal yourself, and that's what's wrong with our society, we think that our government can solve our problems, throwing more money at us, doing this and doing that. They are hurting us. They're not helping us. If we as a nation would get on our knees and pray and seek his face, then there would be healing. There would be peace. There would be breakthrough. That's what it says here. Then he said, surely I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. 
Even America, who is probably one of the most Christian nations in the world, leaders don't want to hear us. They want to shut us down. They want to say we're irrelevant. The word of God is not irrelevant. God's not irrelevant. This nation was built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ and upon the Bible. And we have walked away from it. And it's time that we return. Look what it says next. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah. Oh, there's, there were many widows. There are many that are in need in Israel, in our nation, and around the world. There are many who are in need. When the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and there was a great famine throughout all of the land, but none of them was Elijah sent except to Seraphath in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. Do you know what? God wants to provide. God wants to provide. Think about this. If you read this story completely, one of the things happened in that moment, they rejected Jesus and his word. And he couldn't do many miracles. I don't want us as a church and as a nation to reject what God wants to do. Let's allow the spirit of Elijah to be upon us. Let's allow the word of God to be upon us. Let the spirit of the Lord be upon us for he has anointed us. And we're not going to, to suffer in vain or we're not going to be without because God's going to take care of us because God is Jehovah Jireh our provider would you stand with me next week I want to continue this if you'd like to read 1 Kings 17, 18, 19 that would be a great place if you want to read Chronicles 2 Chronicles 2, 6, 7, and 8. You want to read some stuff that's very important. There's many things, and maybe God takes you in a different place because there's a lot that God wants to say. Do you know we depend upon the word of the Lord to sustain us? You know, the only reason I'm standing here is because God said for me to be a minister. The only reason you're here is because God told you not, you didn't come because of me. You're, God's telling you to be here. Because if you're doing it for any other reason, we, need to, we are dependent upon one another. God wants to use the word of the Lord to affect the widow and the prophet. God wants to use you, and he wants to use the word of God to bring about healing. Can you just obey the Lord a simple if he tells you to bring some water to someone or he tells you to feed somebody or he tells you to go do something, trust that God's going to provide. God's going to provide. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I sometimes wonder why I have cash in my pocket. And I'm sometimes, I, where's Mike at? I don't think he's here, but was it Wednesday night? Some guy came in and said, I need, I need money. And I was reluctant because I said to him, so don't you dare buy alcohol with it. You know, if you buy food, and I took the $20, I said, this is what it says, in God we trust. I'm giving to you this in trust. Use it for the right reason. We are reluctant sometimes, but God wants to use us to share a word. He wants us to help, and he wants us to be prosperous. Do you know that when we help each other, God is honored. This story about Elijah we're still talking about it. And guess what? History is repeating itself. So if there's anyone that has erred, if you are not following the Lord right now, today is the best day for you to come back home. If you have sin in your life and you know this is how the enemy works, he wants to have that sin in your life so he can manipulate you. It says, since we're surrounded by such a great a cloud of witnesses, and Elijah is one of those witnesses, the widow is a witness, lay aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares you and run the race that has been set before you. Lay your sin down today. If the ministering elders would come, if the leaders would come and stand here, I want us to just be ready and open. We want to spend time with you. We want to pray with you. We want to encourage you that God wants to help you. 
God wants to help this church. And I want to say to you, I believe this church is going to be a haven to touch this community. We're going to feed. We're going to help. We're going to, we, you know what we did last week? We bought gas cards. We bought a whole bunch of gas cards. I mean, a whole bunch of gas cards. And, and we said, well, that's not really going to help very much. You can't buy much gas for 20 bucks. We, you know, what, how many gallons can you buy? Four? Four maybe? But we're trying to help. I'm telling you, God wants to use us. And it's not the big stuff sometimes. Look, the one little cup of water, the one little cup of flour, and the little bit of oil changed, and they were sustained for months and months. God will take your little and make it much. Much, little is much. Isn't that a scripture, Dad? Little is much when God is in it. Father, I thank you for the service. I thank you for this opportunity. And anyone here that has not surrendered their lives, let's pray this prayer. I open my heart. I hear your truth. I receive your love. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Today is my day of salvation. Hallelujah. Father, I just ask you to bless this. Lord, we're all in need of you. We're all dependent upon your word. The prophet is, and so is the widow. We need you to speak to us. We need the word of God to go forth. And it will not return void. It will accomplish that which you desire. And we know your desire for us is good, not evil, to give us a future and a hope. And we'll find you when we seek you with our whole heart. We just declare favor, abundance, supernatural provisions. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would cause us to sit by the brook and just be content in knowing that the stillness of your presence is flowing through our lives. We thank you, Lord, you're going to bring provision in ways we've never even imagined, even beyond our belief, even beyond our understanding. You're going to be our provider, Jehovah Jireh, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And remember, we're here to pray with you, to stand with you. And if you want to, if you've accepted Christ today, make sure that you let us know.